Hi, today's video is going to be looking at the bonding between atoms and specifically looking at metallic bonding. The learning objectives that we're looking at today are the metallic bonding is the force of attraction between metal cations, which are positive ions, and their delocalized valence electrons. We'll also be looking at some physical properties of metallic elements and the fact that they can be explained using the model for metallic bonding. The understanding that we need to be um, aware of and what you need to be able to do for this topic is you must be able to explain the melting and boiling points and the electrical conductivities of metallic elements. I'll also look at some of the other, um, the other properties as well. Here's our metallic structure. So if we look at the structure here, we've got um, lots and lots of positive ions that are surrounded by delocalized electrons. So when we look at this structure here, you would suggest that maybe that shouldn't can, wouldn't stay together because there's all the positives. But it's due to the valence electrons and the free C of electrons that it, that it works. Let's have a look at aluminium as an example. When we look at the subatomic structure, you can see that aluminium has 13 protons, um, but only 10 electrons are in the valence shells. It's actually given up three electrons to the to the electron C. So you can see those in the diagrams there. The space between each of the aluminium atoms is then filled by these valence electrons and they are the ones that have been given up by each atom. So the metal atoms, because they've given them up, become positively charged. In this case we've got um, three plus and we have um, valence electrons that are free to move between the spaces of those cations. Due to this we have a large attraction of the positive metal ions and the delocalized valence electrons and that's what holds that crystal together. So if you think about that original diagram where it looked like we had all these pluses sitting next to each other, it's actually the uh, electrons that are holding it, the pluses and minuses together. So here's another diagram showing what we call as the sea of electrons. So from this you can see that you have your positive ions and your electrons here are the black dots. They're able to be moving around and what we end up with is a repeating pattern or sometimes called a lattice. Here are our properties of metals. So we've got that they're very dense, they're good conductors of heat, good conductors of electricity, lustrous or shiny, malleable so they can be shaped, ductile so they can be drawn into a wire and they have relatively high melting and boiling points. So back to the aluminium examples, now we've got the three plus cations and our delocalized electrons between each of those cations. If we were to um, hit the metal with a hammer, say, the ions will be able to move down. But what happens is that the electrons, because they're free to move, they move back in between and so therefore it won't shear, it won't break, it will be able to be, um, it will be able to be uh, moved. And so that's going to be able to explain its ability for um, malleability and ductility, so it can be drawn into a wire. The structure is also what makes the metal strong. It's got a very high melting point because the particles want to stay together. Each of those positive ions are surrounded by negative electrons. And so in general, the more delocalized electrons, the tougher the metal. So if we have a think about our transition metals, they've got the most delocalized electrons. And so therefore we find they are the strongest. The delocalized electrons can also carry the electric current and heat due to their ability to move through the crystal and so that can explain those properties as well. Delocalized electrons also readily absorb and re-emit visible frequency photons giving metals their characteristic luster. And as you can see here in the, the picture in Chicago with the bean, it's extremely shiny. So a quick summary of our properties. High melting and boiling points are due to strong bonds between the positively charged metal cations and the delocalized electrons. So due to this, a large amount of energy is required to disrupt those bonds. They're good conductors of electricity in solid and liquid phase due to the delocalized electrons that allows current to pass through the metal. So are arranged in closely packed lattice structure and so the metals are generally dense. 
Metals typically have a shiny metallic luster and this is due to photons being unable to penetrate very far into the surface of the metal and are typically reflected or bounced off the metallic surface. So that's it from me today. Hopefully that explains the properties of metals. See you next time.